Daniel Ward sits in front of me tonight to discuss more than his on-field exploits during 10 years at the Melbourne Football Club. Sadly, the dashing defender's career is remembered more for his gambling problems along the way than the value of his marks, kicks and handballs. Welcome, Daniel. This isn't going to be easy. No, I don't think you got me down here to uh, go through my 100-odd games for the Melbourne <laughs> Footy Club, but that's all right. Let's talk the footy first. It was a pretty good career. I mean, 130-odd games, 10 seasons and the grand final in 2000. Yeah, had a bit of luck and uh, took my opportunity and, and managed to, uh, to carve out a 10-year career at the footy club. Um, so, yeah, it's, all, it's what I wanted to do when I was a kid, so I achieved that. Grand final didn't turn out quite as you would have liked. I mean, Melbourne went into that grand final having won six games in a row, so you were entitled to be optimistic, weren't you? Yeah, we, uh, we were very confident going into that. Obviously ran into a great side, but, um, yeah, we backed ourselves in. Now, when the ship goes down, it's every man for himself. You had 15 possessions. How did you play? Um, yeah, I don't think any of us played all that well on the day, but, yeah, so-so, I suppose. So-so? Yeah. I thought you thought you might have gone a fraction better than that. You played on Merckx, Mark McCurry. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he kicked the kicked the goal, but yeah, it was a bit of an avalanche there at times. They were a great side, the Bombers, in uh, in that era of 2000. So yeah, wasn't a great day, and um, you know, great experience leading up to it, but not the result we were after. I'm interested in your exit from Melbourne. It was 2007, correct? Yep. Yeah, you played 18 games. Yep. And averaged 18 disposals, and that was it. Yeah, I was 30, I was out of contract and um, Neil Danaher had uh, been relieved of his job that year. Um, so Dean Bailey was coming in, a new era, and um, look, Eddie Betts gave me a little uh, going away present in that <laughs> Carlton game. He kicked five on me and that might have been the final nail. In that the was coffee. the last game? Last game I played. Mm. And uh, I look alright now, Eddie Betts ain't he's yeah. not a bad player now. But um, yeah, so, but that was okay. So Dean sort of said they'll looking to get games in the young guys and going in a different direction and I surely understand that, that's fine. You remember that vividly because that's the end and it probably came earlier than you thought. What, what did you think when you left that meeting with Bales and you said, Jesus, it's over, I'm uh, Daniel Ward, private citizen again? Yeah, shit, I'm in trouble now. That was my first, can I swear, Mike? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, hit me like a sledgehammer and um, what do I do now? I hadn't really planned for... You know, I might look back and sounds crazy now, but um, yeah, hadn't planned too much for for what what happened when it all ended. How was the gambling problem at that time? How were you, how was your financial situation? Yeah, not great, not, not great. great. Yeah, not much to show for all the hard work and sacrifice. Um, so yeah, it wasn't great. And were you still in the grip of the of the punt then? Uh, probably up and down. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, up and down. Um, but. Um, yeah, the financial situation wasn't great at the end of my career. When you say wasn't great, can be more explicit than that? I mean, were you busted? Yeah, yep. That's an embarrassing thing to say, but, um, yeah, that's the truth, yep. Hmm. We'll stay with the footy for a bit longer. You're now with Halebury. Yep. Coaching old Halebury. What what, what uh, section are they in? So they're in the VAFA C, C grade section. Yeah. So, loving it. Loving it. It's my first year at the club. Um, coaching only, so I've only just recently hung up the footy boots. And um, Look, I, I, I love playing footy. I, I still had the bug and I played mm -hmm. with a lot of local clubs. So I was lucky to play with some fantastic local clubs in Mallee Eagles up in Swan Hill and Mombolk uh, Footy Club in the Yarra Valley. Um, really enjoyed my time there, but yeah, the body's had enough. When you talk to the Halebury people about the coaching job, did they raise the gambling issue with you or did you put it on the table? Um, I don't think it came up, no. Didn't it? No. Are they aware of it? Yeah. Well, yeah. I think I think most people in the football yeah. industry are so aware of it. So it wasn't of referred past. to? Must have been a, that must have been a comforting for you. Yeah. Have you advised them that you lapsed last year? Uh, no. How do you think they'd cope with that? Well, yeah, that's, that's part of the process, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's an embarrassing part. Um, but before I, before I dealt with them and, and, and since, um, I haven't relapsed since that stage. No. So. You and I had a coffee uh, recently. You talked about it and you were like anyone I suspect has an addiction, which you openly admit to. And you said to me, and you boasted proudly, that it was 222 days since, since that you'd been sober. Mm. I, mean, you, I remember you using the word sober even though yeah. we were talking about gambling and not drinking. Yep. 
Yeah, look, uh, for me, addiction's addiction. It doesn't matter whether it's 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 alcohol, drugs, or or for me, it's gambling. So, um, doing the right things to try and stay on track. Um, looking back on that time and why, um, you know, I went down the wrong path again and relapsed. And what was sorry, what, what is what does the wrong path mean? Well, the wrong path means that I chose um, to go back into bad habits and 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 solve my financial difficulties with, with punting. Because you'd been clean six and a half years, hadn't you? Yeah, uh, probably a little bit less, but nearly six years. Um, and for a six month period, so the start of 2016, um, yeah, I lost my way. So I don't mean to make this too painful, but I mean, can you remember the circumstances of when you fell off the wagon? Yeah, it's a combination. It's probably a combination of, and I've had to look at that in the, uh, the last eight months of being sober. Um, it's probably a combination of a lot of things, personal um, issues, relation, relationship stuff, um, financial pressures, still there. Um, where I was working at the time, employment, and the industry I was in, and whether that was sort of conducive, the right industry for me to be in with a, a gambling addiction. Um, so a lot of factors. Did you go into a TAB or? Did, you yeah, did. I would, yeah. yeah. How did, I can only guess at this, but how did you feel walking through the doors knowing what you were doing? I mean, you're a rational, smart man and you're walking into the, the, just the last place that suited your circumstances. Crazy. I like to think I'm a rational, smart man, but in that, and look, with addiction, um, when you're in that headspace, um, you're not thinking too rationally. Did you win or lose? Yeah, might like the like the the rest of the time. Yeah, lost might. Yep. Mm. And and that started a, a six month period. Six month yeah. period. Yeah. So um, how did you end? What, what what point did you reach when you sort of said, "I can't keep doing this"? And again, probably until someone helps drag you out. Um, my addiction is it's 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 a serious addiction. So until. Someone helps drag me out, and that was my wife, and a few things, and friends that they'd heard a few things, and whether someone spotted me going in, or um, it was then I had to face it. Had a, uh, and those questions were asked, had I been? Yep. Yeah, and I fessed up. So you did, you fessed up straight away? There was Because you also said to me that when, you, when you're punting, there's a mask on. Yeah. You, have you got this capacity to lie to people and just look them in the oh, eye? Oh, your automatic, your automatic reaction. Maybe I'm not sure whether it was a day or so that I might have, that I might have, uh, you know, reacted and, and lied and said that I wasn't, because that's your automatic reaction as a, as a gambler. Unfortunately, you're a liar and a, and um, not a nice person. So, um, but in the end, uh, when the question was asked, yeah, I, I um, put my hand up and said that I'd been doing the wrong thing again and um, I didn't have the courage. I think courage is the word to yeah. actually go to them or to go to anyone and say I'm battling. Because you're, you're, you're on the past players committee at, at Melbourne yep. and, and the AFLPA, the Players Association, they are much more sensitive to the needs of their ex-players. Yep. There, were, there were avenues for you to explore, were there not? Definitely. Mm. Yeah. And look, addiction, probably gambling addiction, it's one that, you know, and part of doing this is that getting out and getting it out in the open. It's one that we sort of talk about people, you know, whispers and behind closed doors, have you heard this guy and this guy loves a punt and mm. I heard he's in trouble and, you know, it's it's getting that message out whether it's a, whether it's a football or whether it's just a citizen that, that I've had coffees with that are, that are really battling with the punt that there's ways to get help but they've got to get it themselves and they've got to have the courage to ask for that help. Tough thing to admit, but I didn't have the courage. Mm. I, um, I was a bit cowardly in that way. You'd, you'd previously been to Gamblers Anonymous, hadn't you? Yeah, mm. yeah, I had. Um, the thing with Gamblers Anonymous, sometimes it can, it can get lost in a, it's a bit of a spiritual and um, some people could see there's a bit of a religious program and um, the 12 step program that no matter what type of addiction um, and I'm not a religious person as such but um, I know it's worked for me the last eight months and it's worked for me 
in that period of, of the nearly six years that I had off as well. You said a weekly meeting? Yeah, yeah, for me, especially early, I, I was trying to get to two, two meetings mm. a week. Um, and look, I'm not comfortable, as you know, Mike, when we called up for a coffee, I'm not too comfortable talking about a lot of this stuff. And But I suppose <clears throat> some of the people in Gambles Anonymous have got some great insight and can help a lot of people um, and have some fantastic things that, that help me and, and you could bottle and, and, and help other people. Um, but unfortunately, they don't have a voice. I, I have the opportunity, you, you wanted to do an interview with me and um, even though I'm probably uncomfortable doing it, that I feel as though that that can help people out there to tell my story. You've got an addictive personality, obviously, haven't you? I mean, there's a part of you that's addicted to yeah. the punt, but is that a family gene thing, do you think? Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. It is. And um, you know, I'm mindful not to not to talk too much about my family history, but rightly or wrongly, it's in my genes. And um, yeah, addictions. I've got an addictive personality, so I need to um, you know be careful with you know I don't drink a hell of a lot. Um, Your father did, didn't he? He did. Yeah, mm. he did. And um, shot through on an early age. But again, I'm very conscious that. I take full responsibility for my place in life, where mm. I sit now, and um, I'm all about moving forward. And, and um, yeah, but there's it, when you go through and when you're trying to stay on the right track, you need to you need to work out some reasons why about you are the way you are and and how you got here. And yeah, it definitely played a role. When did the problem? You tell me if this gets too awkward, right? No, that's but, all right. You know me, I'm just going to keep yeah, that's all right. prodding away. When did the problem first surface? When did you wake up one day and sort of say, I'm, I'm in a bit of trouble here? Um, well, there was, there was definitely problems throughout my football career, but when you're, uh, when you're earning decent money, you can, you can sort of paper over those cracks. And, and um, probably my worst was, um, you know, after football finished and you'd be on the doing the right thing for a while and then some financial pressures would come along and and you'd go back to old habits and um, yeah there were some times where my family's have, my family's been in, in dire straits a couple of times and um, that's not something that, that I'm too proud of. Um, no. But yeah it was a there was a period after my football career that um, yeah that it got pretty rough for my family. I want to remind you of um, the open letter you sent to country football clubs a few years ago, of this quote. <clears throat> I was a gambling addict, I was a liar, I hurt any person I ever loved. I mean, that's a brutal self-assessment, isn't it? Yeah, it's true. It's true. So part of, part of trying to do the right thing and move forward is, is acknowledging that. And um, yeah, it's a true statement. I remember reading where Brad Scott, the North Melbourne coach, said, this is, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but that gambling was a bigger problem amongst the player group than the illicit drugs and the alcohol. Do you remember seeing that? Yeah, I remember him saying that, yeah. yeah. Do you agree with that? Um, I'll probably the short answer is yes, because I've got more experience and more first-hand knowledge with the gambling addiction side of it. and. Um, I don't know as much about the alcohol or... And I've also been out of AFL land for 10 years. 10 years, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but I see, it, I see it as a massive problem in society. What do you think when you sit down and, watch, and you're watching the footy and you see all those ads for betting agencies? Do, do, do you ever ponder that or not, or is that just a fact of life? Oh, I know it's a fact of life. I'm a bit of a realist that if you take that sponsorship away and from clubs and... You know, life life gets a little bit tougher for some people, but um, I'd be lying if I said it didn't. It's it didn't annoy me a bit, but um, yeah, I, it's a tough one because if there's, it makes everyone else around me uncomfortable. My kids, my wife, mm. my yeah, you know, and that's not the responsibility of you know the. Which the, what 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 makes them uncomfortable? Right, well, if there's a gambling ad comes on TV, <laughs> yeah. and I'm sitting there, and they're th I'm. I'm looking at them, yeah. seeing whether they're looking at me, um, watching that ad. It's, mm. yeah. And look, that's a, that's a bit of an aside. But um, yeah, I don't like, and I think the average person out there thinks it's being overdone. And I think the, I think the thing is that 
they mightn't play out yet, but it's a, it's a normalisation for the kids and the mm. next generation that, that troubles me. I've got two kids and, um, yeah, it's probably worrying a little bit. It's, it, it saturates um, TV when you're watching it. It is everywhere. Yeah. What been, do you think the AFL, what do you think of their stance on this? Yeah, I think the AFL, I actually uh, sent an email to Mark Evans before he got the, the role at Gold Who Coast. Who was the footy operation, the, the footy boss at the AFL? Yeah. yeah, and Mark got back to me, he was great, and got back to me, I, I just said I want to help and willing to do anything I can. I think we might be losing the battle a little bit. And and, um, and Mark got back to me and I'm due to uh, catch up with the AFLPA. I think, I think the clubs and the players are handling it, taking a little bit uh, more of a role in that and looking out for their teammates. Um, but it's definitely an issue, yeah, for sure. Mm. Can I take you back to 2003? I think it's the biggest headline you generated in your in your distinguished career. Yep. You remember the, the story about players gambling on football in the papers? I think it was the age, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, I had two, so it depends which one you're talking about. Yeah. There was a story about you, David Schwartz, was Travis Johnson in, uh, involved in that? Yeah, I think yeah. that was the. Yeah, it wasn't gambling on football. That was more. That was more uh, horse racing. But you did gamble on football. didn't that you? That was a separate occasion. Yeah, separate so occasion. That's where there was two. So there was a. The owing money to bookmaker. Um, mm. That was uh, that was the first one. And was that fifty the, grand? Oh, that was the figure spoken about. Yeah. Was it the correct figure? Oh, round about. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you didn't have it. You couldn't pay it. No. So, again, another embarrassing thing. Um, the second one was was gambling on AFL footy. I think there was uh, a few other people. I think it was, at that time, I think it was Kieran Jack, Simon Goodwin. But Kieran Jack had 10 bucks on him. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they come down on him pretty hard, yeah. I'd say. So, yeah. um, but you and Simon Goodwin and David Swartz clearly had major problems with punting. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I had I, at that stage. You know, you look back at it now and you think well, you, you must be crazy to gamble on AFL footy. At that stage, I think I there was I'm not sure the numbers of how many times it might have been three or four times where I'd put Melbourne in a in a uh, multi bet um, and um, just trying to boost odds and you know. <laughs> but you're not thinking again. Like I spoke to you before, you're not thinking sanely. Mm. It seems crazy now to. You know, why would you do something like that? And I ended up with a big fine out of it. And so you got, you got fined ten grand by the AFL. I think this is my memory. Eighteen bets worth three thousand odd dollars. Yep. And they fined you ten grand and suspended five. Yep. Correct. Yeah. Did you ever bet against Melbourne, Daniel? No, I don't believe I did. No. 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 Tell me about the feeling. Take me to a place I've never been. You're running down the race. You got no money. And you've invested in the res the outcome of football matches. What sort of pressure is that? To be honest, I didn't I didn't um, I wasn't really thinking of that. I'd probably put a multi on on a Friday or something like that and tuck us in for a, an odds boost. But um, I wasn't. But when you say that, and, and I admire your honesty a hundred percent, but you had three thousand more than three thousand dollars in bets on footy. Yeah. So there's a few multis there. You must have had a few reasonable straight out bets, did you? No, I don't reckon I had a straight out bet. No. So they're all multis? Yep. Totaling three and a half grand? Yep. Okay. Yep. So it didn't, you never, did you play a football game under the pressure of, of the punt? Oh, yeah. 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 Not, not having gambled on the game, but I played plenty of football. Where it got to, Mike, was, was my situation. I'd, you know, something I always wanted to do was play AFL footy, and I was coming to training and to a lesser extent, game day to turn my phone off and and escape all the whether it's debt collectors or you know it's um that's an embarrassing thing it's mm. and it's you know something that you look back on not very fondly and um you know I know you say I beat myself up a bit but that's that's the truth that's that's what I was and um but that being said I've I've got to move on on. You know, yeah, I've sure. got to move on with the rest of my life. And, and we have dwelt on that, I understand that, but yeah. I think it's, given that you've agreed to talk about this in the interest that it might help some others, yeah. I think the detail's important. Oh, yeah, yeah. for one of the sure. Things you said, one of the things you said to me, which I was really taken with, the metaphor about when you finished a gambling spree or a gambling period and you'd look at the damage and you said it was like a cyclone. Yeah. You're looking back and you're sort of saying, 
What happened to you? Yeah, you got to fix up the mess, and um, that's still the case. That's still the case. Yeah, like I, I, obviously someone that's gambled for that long isn't in the same financial position and can't offer the same things to his kids and and family that that someone that wasn't doing that over that period of time. Um, so yeah, that's a constant. That's a constant um, daily occurrence. What's the low point, Daniel, in, 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 the, in the context of the gambling? Was there a phone call or a day or a, or a loss? To probably too much, too many to, to pinpoint one. It's probably been a couple. Low point was when I did go to, it got to a stage where I um, had an intervention and, um, and went and sought help and spent a month in, a, in an addiction clinic. And that was back in 2010. That set me on my path for nearly six years off. But probably fresh in my mind is the is the period um, early early last year up until um, sort of eight months ago. Because you thought you were through it. Yeah, I was hope I yeah. hoped I was through it. Yeah, um, and I'd made statements and promises and all that type of stuff. What I know now is there was warning signs along the way and. And um, I didn't, I didn't do anything about that. Mm. And sooner or later, and again, I've seen it firsthand with with gamblers that I'm working with at the moment, and 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 trying to help that. If you're not doing the right things, this addiction just it'll grab hold of you. Are there any signposts that you would say to people going down the same path that where the alarm bells just ring and you sort of say, "I've got to stop now, or I'm headed for trouble." Um, it's once you start lying and keeping secrets mm. and keeping stuff from family and um, you know, obviously finances and you know people go without food and did that happen to you? Yeah. 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 You did tell me one day you couldn't put petrol in the car. Yeah, that's happened before. Uh, you must Pretty feel embarrassing. Well, you must feel absolutely forlorn, as if um, sort of hopeless almost. That the mindset of a gambler, Mike, is if. If you've got if you've got twenty dollars in your yeah. in your wallet and you need to I don't know whether it's pick up dinner or put petrol in your car, pick up dinner, and you need a hundred. Well, the mindset of the gambler when you're in that when you're in that phase is yeah, let's try and turn it into a hundred. Even though your track record wasn't all that good. <laughs> yeah, but you're not thinking sanely, Mike. Yeah. You're not you're not and that's where that's where, you know, I need to be hyper vigilant. Now, yeah, yeah. Um, my wife plays a great role in that, in, in calling me out, and she's seen all the signs of. So, does she trust you with with cash? To a point, yeah, because I have to, I have to survive. So, yeah. the thing with you know, if you got a drug or alcohol addiction, you know, it's probably separate. But but with cash, it's the money. You know, you still got to live and survive. Yeah. And um, but I wouldn't say my wife fully trusts me now. No, no, not at all. Um, and probably people close to me. And there's, um, you know, and the relapse when I when it happened, there's there's a there's a close um, group of people, family and friends that, that I confided in, and that was really difficult. And um, I've lost their trust. Mm. Um, but what can I do? I, I I can only look forward. Of course, you can't change what's happened. But have you lost anyone that was important to you because of the gambling? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have, um, but not just not just that. It, it, it's damaged the relationships mm. of the people important to me in my life. Those, those people are, you know, my wife and two kids and and my family, close friends. Um, I think those those relationships have been tarnished for sure. Can I ask you about your mum? Yeah, yeah. Your mum's uh, you're still close to her. Yeah, yeah. Your mum was 16 when she had you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So you grew up in a broken home. Yep. She must have been very important in your life. So when this happened, how do you sort of explain to her? Yeah, I've, I think it's... I think she's been through, like my wife, she's been through the ringer a fair bit. You spoke about my history and, you know, um, being on the front page of the paper for gambling issues and... Um, yeah, she's been fantastic. Um, brought up my sister and, and myself mm. with, you know, we'd work two, three jobs and 
Um, you know, she's been great, and I guess, I guess, in that six-year period, she didn't have to worry about me. I, mm. I was, I was on the right path, and and then going back and starting again, she probably worries about me a bit now, and and you know, and that's that again is a fair bit of guilt, but um, yeah, she's been fantastic and a great support, um, and has had to do it tough herself. Do you ever hear from your father? No. Does that hurt you? No. No. I've dealt with it. Oh, I've dealt with it a while ago. Um, it is what it is. Um, but I've had a few other, few other things with father figures happen and happened to me again uh, a while ago with uh, my stepfather as well. Shot through. So. Yeah, I haven't had great, I haven't had great father figures in my life, and yeah, I think you're entitled to a share, share of better luck along the way, though. Yeah, but that's, mm. you know, I've got my own family now, so I try and concentrate on being the mm. right. And again, the shame and being hard on myself is probably, it's probably to do with that a little bit. That, um, you know, I'm affecting, I'm affecting them. I like to consider myself as a good father, as a great father. Um, and I think I am, but all this stuff overshadows it sometimes. Mm. What about your dialogue with Neil, Neil Danaher, Daniel? He's, you are very close, and Neil's fighting his own battles, which we know about. Yeah. So do you talk about each other's problems with each other? Um, oh, the thing with Neil, Neil gets asked, and he'd get asked every day how he's going, and so I've caught up with Neil a couple of times, and... Um, we just try and talk about other things and footy and, and all that type of stuff. I think he's going well, he's going well, but, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't believe when I was battling last year that, that he reached out to me mm. and, you know, for, you know, what he's going through, everyone knows Neil's story. Um, you know, it says a fair bit about the person. I, I'm probably closer to him now than, than when I was a player. He used to give me a couple of sprays, so, um, <laughs> but... Yeah, to to reach out and and to he sent me a, a text about my life and um, to concentrate on looking forward and have perspective and um, and I read that on a daily, weekly um, basis. It's um, yeah, it says a lot about the person to to do what he did for me last year. I mean, I'm full of admiration for you, truly. I know you've had an issue uh, and you've wrestled with it and you're man enough to talk about it and address it and hopefully there's a few people who will benefit from your brutal honesty today. It's great to catch up with. It's a story that needs to be told and you've done it beautifully. No worries. Thanks, Mike. Cheers. This has been a Fox Footy production. Part of the Fox Sports Network.